Good morning. Today I just wanted to show you an example of how our Delta Pro app works. And um, this is a good one because these images were taken over a cloudy day so that you can see how much power we generate on a not so good day and know that most days are better than this for us. So in this first image, you can see that it is 7.18 a.m. Our battery is at 51 percent at 64 degrees Fahrenheit. We have three days, five hours left on this battery if we remain at zero input, zero output. If you look below, you can see the, the solar input is showing uh, zero. Um, below that there's an AC port, an infinity port, and there's a couple other ports that we could use for input, but uh, the machine is not plugged into anything. It's not plugged into the generator at this point because we don't need it. So this slide is an example of our output option on the app. It's still 718 AM, the battery is still 51%, etc. Uh, below you can see the outputs that are available. Um, the AC is what the, the trailer is plugged into whenever um, we have it turned on, which it is not. And there are two 12 volt um, outputs and then it also shows um, the AC outlets and the um, USB charging ports, which are also not active at this point. Here we are at 8.07 a.m. The battery is at 52%, it's 64 degrees, still zero input, zero output. Um, really nothing has changed. Um, nothing has changed in the output either. Here at 9.09 .09 a.m. we're finally getting some input. Uh, we have 171 watts coming in on, from our solar panel. Um, you can show that the charge is now showing at 54.17%. And if you look above the little image of the Delta Pro, it shows 7 hours, 0 minutes. That's how long it would take for the battery to completely recharge at that rate. As you can see, we are still choosing not to draw on our battery. We wanted to give it a chance to recharge before we started turning on appliances. Here at 1010 10 a.m. our battery charge is up to 62.75 percent and at the rate of 290 watts input it would take three hours 24 minutes to fully recharge. Uh, at this point we are still not using any appliances to draw on the battery. At 11.12 a.m. our battery percentage is up to 76.23 and our input has climbed to 318 watts. At this time it would take two hours and one minute to fully recharge the battery. At 12.06 p.m. a little afternoon our charge is up to 87.82% the input is at 382 watts. Um, at this rate it would take 59 minutes for the battery to finish recharging. And if you look on the little graph down lower, I had turned it on a little bit early to kind of watch what was going on. And you can see the amber line there is showing how the fluctuations in sunlight are affecting the charge. At that particular time, James and I were having lunch in another town. But our application on our phones allowed us to check in on our systems while we were away. At 1.28 p.m. our charge had gone up to 100% and we decided it was time to start charging some uh, appliances at home. Our, you know, our laptops, the battery for the RV, and um, just run some some general things around the house. Um, the input at this point in time was at 203 watts and our output was about 299. That's pretty standard for when we're just charging the RV battery. Um, whenever we're running the 
uh, laptops, it'll probably bump up to about 400. Uh, other appliances will obviously add on top of that. At this point, it's important to note that we have 14 hours and 33 minutes of battery left. Not too bad for a uh, cloudy day. At 2.18 p.m., our input is 219 watts, our output is 214 watts, so we are at a net gain. Um, the battery was sitting at 92.13%, and the charge at that point would have taken two days to top it up, but all we would have to do is shut, uh, shut appliances off in the RV, and it would top out very quickly. Sometimes when we get to 100%, we'll switch the refrigerator over onto electricity instead of propane and save just a little bit of fuel in the process. In this image, it's 3.51 p.m. We have 11 hours and 39 minutes of charge left at 85% charge. Our input has dropped down to 99 watts as the sun is starting to go down and disappear behind our trees. And our output is a 209 watts, generally just using laptops and uh, the occasional light. One other thing that we do to conserve our propane is to use the, uh, the hot water kettle to heat water for washing dishes because the hot water heater holds six gallons of hot water and I don't need six gallons of hot water to wash our dishes. I just need the little half gallon that's in the kettle. We save the hot water heater for when we need to take a shower and we just turn it on for that amount of time. And now it's 5 p.m. The sun has pretty much set for us for the day. It's not completely dark but there's not enough solar power for the uh, panels to take a charge. Um, our rate of uh, our, our, our battery left is 9 hours 7 minutes. We're at 80%. We're good for the night. We can sit down and watch TV after dinner and enjoy a couple of TV shows without taxing our system at all for the next day. And on this last frame I wanted to give an example of the kind of sunshine we get on a nice sunny day here in November. Um, at 10.48 a.m. on this particular day, we had an input of 518 watts. We had already run our battery down below 48%, and it was recharging at this point. We have in the past run the battery down to as low as about 30%, and the next day the sunshine would just top it right back up again. So it's not really um, living... It's not really living super frugal. You just have to have it in the back of your mind that that light doesn't need to be on because I'm not over there. And really, that's what you should be doing to conserve power anyway on your own electric bill. One of the things that we intend to do to improve our system is change out all the light bulbs in the RV for LED lights so that we can afford to run the lights a little more often, a little longer, just for comfort's sake and not run our battery down very fast because a lot of these lights currently have two bulbs in them and they're running 100 watts a piece. There are some lights in here that only have one bulb in them. They're still running 50 watts, maybe 48 and um, we don't need that light all the time, but sometimes it's just nice. So getting the LED lights will allow us to enjoy more light in the evening, um, especially with daylight savings time, without worrying about are we going to need to turn the generator on tomorrow because we decided comfort was more important than conservation. We hope you found this video to be informative to see how the app works for the Delta Pro and the ability to turn it on and off while you are not at home is very convenient, especially when you have things at home plugged in ready to recharge when the battery gets full. If you've gotten some value out of this, 
please give us a like. If you know someone who's interested in solar, share it with them. And if you have any questions or comments, we'd be happy to chat with you in the comments down below. You have a great day.